welcome everyone to another episode of Accessibility. You'll notice I'm on camera just having a casual conversation, not with a script in front of me, because we're doing one of those episodes where I bring someone else in the accessibility space on and we just have a little conversation about something. Uh, you've been you've been on this show before, but for anyone who, who doesn't know you, do you want to introduce yourself? Tell people about who you are today, special guest. Yes, hello everyone. My name is Arabia and I'm a disabled and chronically ill content creator from Norway. Uh, I am a streamer and I make TikToks and I do accessibility advocate and do public speaking and all that jazz. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, and we are here today because I've I've wanted to talk about this for a little little bit of time. Um, back in uh, December of 2023, we got the release of the PlayStation Access controller, which is obviously uh, one of the new accessibility controllers for consoles. And a lot of people did accessibility controller reviews at the time when the, the controller came out and uh, first impressions. But I think accessibility hardware is one of those things where like it really takes some time to build an impression of how a piece of hardware is going to sort of ultimately land with you. So I, I wanted to chat with you today a little bit about like how a, a little bit about your experiences with accessibility controllers and how this new controller is fitting into your life now that it's been there a little yeah. while. So uh, do you want to give a little bit of background on your history with accessibility controllers? So I have, as you guys might see, if you see the screen, I have functioning arms. My arms work to a degree. I am born with something called cerebral palsy and arthritis, which make things just in general painful for me. So about two, one to two years ago now, I was Twitch streaming and I talked to my audience and I was just like, I don't know what I'm going to do because I like doing these long gaming sessions, but my hands is starting to always cramp up and like stiffening and painful. And somebody in my chat was just like jokingly said, why don't you just play with your feet? And I just like, okay, but that is not a dumb idea <laughs> because I, that is the thing I, when you have my kind of specific problems, there are two things that you have to not do. Move too much and move too little. So you need to be mm. on this constant in between for your fingers to not stiffen up or get in, inflamed. So you're mm. on the balance all the time. And the problem was that when I played with a regular controller, like I held in my fingers for like running or sprinting and stuff like that. Yeah. That, or I did like this really complicated quick time thing. So over a long time, mm. that froze my hands up. So I got myself firstly the Xbox controller, started playing with my feet and it was like, mm. insert the meme here, because that was just like opening my eyes of all of the suddenly being able to go back to how I felt that was when I was younger and played games. Mm. And then the uh, PlayStation one came out and I did the same and I'm absolutely loving it. Both of them mm -hmm. have pros, both of them have cons, but still I, I, I'm so in love with both of them. So yeah. 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 Um, looking at those two controller designs, um, they, they definitely are very different. For anyone who's not seen them before, I'll have little images up on screen. The Xbox adaptive controller is largely one big panel with a couple of large buttons and a lot of external inputs, whereas the PlayStation uh, Access Controller is a circular batch of inputs uh, with a smaller number of external uh, inputs. And yeah. I think it would be fair to say, if you look at the two of them, the Xbox Adaptive Controller is a more obvious one you look at and go, I can see how that would be useful to play with your feet. Yeah. Because it's got two very easy to press <laughs> yeah. buttons that are large and single inputs uh, that, that are easy to target with a foot. Yeah. Um, how have you found the PlayStation Access controller now it's been out a couple of months as something to use in that kind of way? So I, so for me, I look at like the things I like with the Access controller is that it's a complete controller. Uh, mm. While the, I feel like the Xbox controller is more a hub. Like it's a yeah. hub for other things, which makes yeah. it so much more helpful in other ways. But what I am really enjoying with the PlayStation controller, it's that it, I feel it's more plug and play. Uh, yeah. I use the PlayStation controller with my game kit. So my mm. Logitech gaming kit, I think it's called, which is like extra yeah. buttons. So mm. I, I just use it with the external ports. I haven't used it that much with um, the controller itself. So for me, I sort of use it as a hub. 
but the yeah. system in itself is so much easier to use. It's night and day. Um, I have, due to my cyber palsy, a bit of cognitive problems as well. Mm. And the access controller is 100% easier to use <laughs> than the uh, Xbox controller. Still love my Xbox controller. Still use it a lot on my computer playing. But the setup on the Xbox controller is horrendous compared to the mm. access controller. Yeah, it's it's really difficult. I've had people ask me, um, hey, I'm looking to get into console gaming and I know accessible controllers exist, which one do you recommend? It's so hard to directly compare the two of them yes. because the it, I think it's undeniable the Xbox adaptive controller, there's a lot more utility in the kinds of setups you can create. If you need to create a really specific setup, the Xbox adaptive controller gives you much more the tools to really customize that 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 setup. Yeah. But I a couple of months in with the the access controller existing, I really agree with you that I've been going and and using the access controller a lot more than the Xbox adaptive controller just because it feels a lot more like I don't have to to go I've got that barrier if I'm going to have to set all the cables up and make sure it's all organized before I can use it. The access controller I can largely just pick it up and it's ready to go and it's the default setup that works that that I've sort of gotten some muscle memory for yeah. that works for most games and I can just jump into it without having to really think about it in the way that I do with with Xbox's setup. Yeah, and it's like and and the thing is that I understand what uh Xbox did when they they just gave us all the ports. So if anybody looks at the back side of an Xbox uh, adaptive controller you will see there is like a million holes in it and every one of them have like this is the hole for a this is the hole for x yeah. this is the hole for y and everything so you have like sort of a system there but then in the xbox accessories i think it's the english word for it mm. um there is a whole new setup of how you can rearrange things but that one is limited so if you haven't plugged it in in the correct thing so it's a lot of work that way because I have more than once set up my controller and then realized I can't get it to work because I plugged my mm. Y button into X and then it doesn't want to reconnect in the software. It doesn't want to remap in the software. So the software is hard yeah. to use, but it wins so much with you. You can have it on your PC. Yes. Yes. And yes. you can have it on your PC. And like, as a sweaty gamer, I am mostly on my PC and there is where so, I want to be. <laughs> so it's really strange because when I got my review unit of the, the access controller, the PlayStation one, I plugged it into my PC and that first day it worked on PC. Yes. Uh, Steam Steam recognized it. Yes. I couldn't get two of them to work, but I got one of them to work and I mapped the controls and it worked great. And then the second time I plugged it in, it just didn't recognize anything anymore and it never worked again. Yeah. I, and I don't know what was going on. No, I think that PlayStation has like lost a bit on that bone. Because what I like mm. then, since I said all that stressful thing with the Xbox, on the PlayStation yeah. controller, it's just like E1, E2, E3, E4. Yeah. So they, they aren't set to be anything. You have to go in and set them to be on a profile, yeah. which I think it's so much better. So if the PlayStation gave us like a PlayStation on PC kind of thing, like an Xbox mm. accessory, but PlayStation accessory. Yeah. Oh my God, that controller would be so good to have. <laughs> For well, feet gaming. That, <laughs> I, I think I think the thing is, like, the, the, the software on PS5 for the access controller is undoubtedly the like one of the biggest benefits it has over the Xbox it's adaptive so controller. Good. Um the fact that you can store multiple profiles and have like a single button to switch between different kinds of button mapping at the same time. Yes. Um that that has been really nice. Um I, I have found uh, there are certain games that are only that are playable on a single access controller that I wouldn't have thought would be playable with just one access yeah. controller because you can use the profile button to swap what the analog stick does. If I need to just very quickly like move the camera, press profile, move the same stick, press it again, I'm back to moving the character. Yeah. Things like that aren't really supported by the Xbox ad adaptive controller. You have one setup and that setup stays that setup. Um, yeah. It, yeah. It, <sighs> and also... They have the, the only the other thing they have is that if you hold in the profile button, 
you automatically mm. get pulled into the yeah. setup and there you can again hold it in and it in the controller uh, goes back to sort of a pre-programmed thing so makes it 100% yes. usable so if you ever edit it in a way where you technically now can't approve things yeah. and you can just hold in the button and then it just resets it but it doesn't delete your profile it just goes sort of to a like a, a neutral secret, state yeah neutral state yeah and it's so <laughs> good i i can't like they have seen because uh xbox is just the og they are mm. the real mvp they came for well nintendo came first but they came first <laughs> in the modern times and they were just yeah. like this and then but then playstation saw it and went like wait a second hold my beer i can do better although, although i will say like i i think one of the big differences that really feels like it's the case between xbox and playstation right now in the accessible controller space is playstation really feels like the access controller is the accessibility controller and any other controller you use kind of falls outside of that because there's one point that like really frustrates me about playstation still and it's on Xbox, if you're doing uh, co-pilot mode, you're using more than one yep. controller, you can separately map those two controllers to have different button mappings, different orientations. Mm -hmm. uh, PlayStation, you can't do that. If you're using two dual senses in, in, in a setup, oh. you can't rotate one, you can't button map it separately. And I've asked people at PlayStation about this and their answer is, well, there's only one way to hold a dual sense controller. Right, and that's a really gross answer, but it, it kind of feels like they're doing really good work with the access controller, but it feels like the access controller is the start and finish of where they're thinking about accessible yeah. controller hardware. Whereas I think Xbox are undeniably like doing really good stuff to go, yeah. accessibility doesn't start and stop at this controller hub we've got. And also with all the things Xbox does, like uh, if you aren't familiar with like the gaming industry, but the Xbox does a lot of things for like events. Like they make mm. guidelines and conducts on how to like make events accessible. Yeah. So they do so much more. They have like a aura of everything should be accessible. Yeah. But what I think before, at least how I normally looked at it was like PlayStation, you go for the... I am so sorry for that noise. That was my dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Uh, PlayStation, you went to for getting your uh, accessible games. And then Xbox, yeah. you it went to to get your accessible hardware and programs yeah. and so still a software, but not necessarily the games itself. Not not pushing the games forward yes. in the same kind of innovative ways that PlayStation has felt like. Yeah, and now with the X, uh, access controller, uh, they sort of are trying to go. But I also agree, this isn't the be all end all about accessibility yeah. because. I can't use the access controller with my hands. Uh, I have tried. I tried to do three sessions with it with my hands and all of times I ended up having horrendous pain. And uh, because the way it's, I have it here and I'll show you, mm. uh, but it's, you uh, audience can see that it's a bit like curved on the top, which yeah. makes me, when I hold my hand on top of it, it won't be pleasant way of holding it and it will make strains on my hand yeah so i yeah yeah and which i was a bit disappointed of because one of the things but i haven't found it later so i don't mm. know if i dreamt this or if i actually read it or if they just removed it or what it was but i once thought that i read that this controller was supposed to like help you if you had like um Oh, what is it called when you have like not the muscle problems in your hands but like the other things you have in your hands huh tendons, tendons. Uh, there we go oh yeah <laughs> my fiance just went by <laughs> and just like honey it's tendons <laughs> 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 yeah like you have the tendons problems you can get while mm. gaming and they i thought i once read that like this controller was going to help you if you had those so you can game for a longer time i felt like that was what they started so saying yeah, it, it, it's tricky. Like, I've got my access controller here uh, on, on camera, and I've taken a couple of buttons off of the bottom of it. Yeah. Because I find if I'm using it with my hand, I don't want to be hovering my hand to not accidentally press inputs. Yeah. And the only way that I could find it comfortable to use with my hands was to take off, like, two or three keycaps, make sure nothing was programmed to those buttons, so that I had a place I could rest my hand where I could feel I'm in the divot where I'm not accidentally pressing inputs. Yeah. Um, like, 
things about the access controller that I, I, I think could definitely be changed in a revision. Um, whether you like the Xbox adaptive controllers like being a hub or not, I really think that a version of the access controller that had more ports available yes. on it yes. wouldn't you would lose nothing. No. You would lose nothing by offering more ports. And like I think if you had a version of this that had more ports so that in theory you could use it like a hub or use it as a standalone controller, I think it would be much easier to say this is the accessibility controller I'd recommend for most people. Yeah. But right now that that limited number of ports makes it a this or that situation that it really yes. doesn't feel like it needs to be. Yeah. And that's the thing though, because I've also said it to a lot of people. I got sent my Xbox, uh, no, yeah. my uh, access controller, PlayStation access controller, they got sent to me. So yeah. I didn't have to pay for them. And the thing yes. is with my setup, I need to have two of them. For me, yes. two of them, then I have eight ports. That is enough for me because I don't need yeah. anything more. But at the same time, like, then you have to, like, it's, um, yeah. it can be a lot of a price when you had to add up more and more and more things on it. So I agree with that yeah. one. Or to be honest, what I think would be really, really cool if we just got like a small hub, like with a PlayStation yeah. on top, so you can just push it on. And then that was the hub and then you could just add everything you need to. I don't yeah. think that is realistic to dream about, but I will still dream. <laughs> it's 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 tricky because like the thing that I realized because I got sent uh, I got sent a pair of them for review as well, and that that number of ports four on each controller. Um, one thing I find really difficult to map onto the access controller is because it's a circle of inputs. I can't find a place to put the four D pad directions that feels natural. Because in my head, they should be up, down, left, and right from each other. Oh, I haven't and thought about that. And you can't map that around a circle. Yes. Um, so I, I started looking online for, like, external D-pad inputs that I could get. Because I was like, if I can just map a D-pad to something separate, that would probably be a lot easier. Mm -hmm. uh, the way that, like, external D-pad inputs work is that they're four separate inputs. They're an up D-pad up, down, left, and right. Yep. That's four of your inputs taken if you want a D-pad. Yeah. And, like, uh, as soon as you then add on uh, the access controller doesn't have analog inputs, so you've got to put two analog uh, buttons to be able to do analog triggers, that's six of your eight inputs gone. Yep. Uh, like, it, it, they, they can go very quickly. And I think, while while eight is enough for me, it is a number that, like, it, it, it really feels unnecessary that it's quite as low as it is. Yeah, like, and even I, who hasn't gotten the most advanced setup... Uh, for my feet, uh, like eight buttons, uh, eight inputs are just pressing it. Like, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that is what I wish they had more of. But one thing I do yeah. think they have, though, which I hope, like, I hope to see Xbox steals this, is the uh, toggle to hold. I, yes. th that is just, that, well, it blew my mind. And I, I wish they had that for the DualSense controller as well. Th this is what ah, I was about to say. Yes. I love the toggle to hold. But there, again, this goes back to what I was saying about PlayStation really seems to think that the access controller is the be, end, be all end all of where their accessibility efforts lie. Yep. Because toggle to hold could easily be a button mapping input for the DualSense. Yeah, but I, they don't let you because that's an accessibility thing. So we put it on the accessibility controller. I wish we could have toggle to hold and imagine if we could have a uh, button pressing. So like if you press oh. once, it would just like mash it for you. Yeah, for 10 essentially times. a turbo turbo button ah! functionality. Just I hold, uh, I press it once and it mashes until I press it again. Yeah. Oh, that would be the, the dream. Yeah. I... But again, that that is a really good one. PlayStation has. I do hope Xbox picks it up. And I think if Xbox does it, they probably will make it work on their regular controller, not just on the yeah. the adaptive controller. And they also have the uh, one click two buttons kind of deal that one yes. is also good so it, even though you only have eight ports you can run around a bit in that sense where like yeah so there is ways you can deal with it but again yeah. it is that is the biggest like lacking and the fact that you can't connect it to your yeah. pc and and i do like about the the physical controller i like that they ship it with some of those double width width buttons because yeah. if you need to be pressing more than two buttons at once you make a two button macro and a different two button macro and press one double width button you've hit four buttons yeah it's so press. cool like some of the the physical thought around like hitting multiple buttons at once is really good they have some really forward thinking things yeah. and i just think they could be doing more with it like some of my wishes for it are things that are a little ambitious and i don't think they will do but um 
I would love if they could make a something so you press a physical button and it emulates a touchpad swipe in a direction. Oh, that would be cool. Uh, things like that. There are things that like I think they could be doing but aren't. But yep. I don't think any of them are like huge problems. No, and I also do think that uh, your experience with getting like this might be the like be all and all. That isn't the same experience I have had when I talking mm. to them. But then again, like we are just talking to people working in yeah. the proximity. Like the, the, we will never be able to hear it from the yeah. the big people who actually make the decision. But I hope, though, that since um, PlayStation is so focused on accessible games, mm. that they will sort of be forced that they're they're yeah. they have started a snowball that they now it... can't stop. If games, yeah. if like if we say we get another God of War, another um, mm. really really accessible game that have like used their access controller in the preset. Like it would be so cool to f yeah. get like the next God of War and they just like, if you press this button or in options, you get this setup for your access controller. And this is what we recommend to be the standard setup when you play this game, something like that. And then press them. I, so I did ask them about this when I went to a preview event last September, I asked if they had any thought of doing this. Cause I know that for um, the a weird comparison, but I know the Steam Deck, uh, when you pick up games on Steam Deck, you can often get recommended controller pro yeah. profiles. Mm -hmm. uh, PlayStation, uh, I spoke to, uh, I think it was the head of, of product development on the yeah. access controller, Alvin, I forget his surname. Um, he specifically doesn't like that idea oh, of shoot. giving you a recommended profile. Um, and I kind of get why, like his reasoning, and I'm paraphrasing off the top of my head here, is um, that people's uh, needs are so different from each yeah. other with this controller that they don't want to lead you in a direction that might not be useful for your particular needs. And as such, they're sort of hesitant to suggest a setup. Yeah, I can understand that. And I get them. that while also going, it would be really nice to just be able to go, uh, what's what's a what's a have you put some work into finding a one-handed setup or yeah. a like a, you know so some default setups that might work for certain common um kinds of needs because yeah. i think like some you know how a lot of their games now have um a vision preset hearing preset motor presets yeah. for accessibility settings i feel like you could find broad categories of need that you could recommend starting setups for yes and i also think that because even when I got the access controller and being such a nerd that I am and being like an accessibility nerd and all that jazz, mm. like I was like seething to get my tooth in this. Mm. But even I, when I opened it, I was a bit overwhelmed and just like, where yeah. do I start? And if I get that with being so invested in it, yeah. if you are, especially if you are newly disabled or chronically yeah. ill, you already have all of this like notions of... Yeah, like this is maybe a bit of a tangent, yeah. but when you get ill, if you haven't been ill for before, there is like this feeling of everything being a bit overwhelmed and you have a yeah. problem letting go of your past life. Uh, that is something that can, for some people, take years. It did for me. It like took yeah. me like three, four years before I just like let go of the old me and understand that this is the new me and it still has value and worth. Things like that, when it gets overwhelmed with using tools that is supposed to help me yeah. would be something that would just push it away from me because i would go like no this is too complicated this is just like i i can use the other controller even no matter how much yeah. pain i was in like it 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 is um it, being getting disabled or getting chronically ill is a delicate sensitive topic and it is due to the ableism that is in society it's hard yeah. to understand and have to like deal with it uh, yeah. and then it takes years and i wish like they understood that with the presets like it's not about yeah we all being different because yes we are it's also being a hey you have never used it let us help you because i even yeah. didn't understand <laughs> open this control i was going to play spyro with it and i was just like where should i put things <laughs> yeah my my first day with the uh controller the preview i went to like a day-long preview event and it took me most of that first day to work out what uh, how how this controller was going to be usable yeah. for me because there were so many overwhelming ways I could set it up yeah. and things that I thought would be sensible and then didn't really work in practice. 
and so much stop and start trying to remember, like, because, like, a big thing is, if you're booting up a game you haven't booted up before, you don't know up front yes. what buttons are going to be needed, Yes. Uh, which buttons are going to be the most commonly pressed, which ones you're going to need in to press in combination with each other, which meant that, like, my first, like, half an hour with a game would be constantly stopping and going, oh, that button's actually really necessary, I need to put it on a, on a finger I'm more comfortable repeatedly pressing with. Yeah. Um, and that is something where having a preset... At the very least, having like a recommended preset would let you know these are the commonly used buttons and we've tried to lay them out in a way that we think sorts them by priority of like how frequently they'll be needed. Yeah. Even if you move them around, it will tell you these are the commonly used buttons and that that alone would help. Yeah, and I think it's also that goes in on the cognitive accessibility because we have to remember that a lot of disabled people and chronically ill people also have cognitive barriers just due to the... Yeah world of having an illness and like if it gets to the most people disabled or not if they want to play a game they want to sit down and play the game if it gets yeah. too much other things they need to fix they just lose interest and yeah. i feel like that is the weakness of this controller it has a lot of positive things and i absolutely love it i can't like i played through all of final fantasy now with my yes. feet and i did it in a week like and i thought yeah. my hands would be wrecking after that and i was just like nah i'm fine and it was so yeah. freeing like i felt like finally i can do this and finally i can game oh, uh, <laughs> and it's just like so nice but it is still room for improvement yeah yeah um We've been talking for coming up on half an hour, so I, I, I think one last question I wanted to ask before we sort of start wrapping up is, how, has your opinion of the PlayStation Access Controller changed much over the, the three months or so since it released? And is the way you're using it, has that changed at all over that time? Yes, because when I got it, tried it, got really disappointed because it hurt my yeah. hands so much. And yeah. that was something I was really disappointed with just because I thought maybe that was wrong of me, but I thought it was supposed to help us with hand pain, but that might be fault on my part. But now that I've tried it more and seen what I can do with playing with my feet, have like set, like, like looked more into the setup, I am just above what I was before the controller came out. So I'm a really big fan now. Uh, I, I'm a positive jolly go around kind of person anyways. So like I'm, easy entertain of things but yeah. i do understand it has its limits and like we have talked about it all now and i i think it's really important for playstation to continue this yeah. they can't stop here and they need yeah. to listen to us and they need to continue but this is such a good start with comparing yeah. to all the problems i've had with my xbox and the setup and the uh, system things even mm. though i i Adore that controller because that was, will forever be my first intro to accessible gaming hardware wise and I will always like I still use it every single time I play on my PC right now PlayStation with these systems is just so tough kiss and yeah yeah if we could just can somebody just let them be friends and make like a <laughs> hybrid <laughs> so I we mean, can have the hub from xbox the yeah. ideas from xbox the software from playstation <laughs> i mean we've I've, I've talked about this over on youtube before I, I do you know that nintendo tried to do this once they tried to get all three companies to work together on an accessibility no controller. i did not know with that that's so, so cool yeah so we learned about this, uh, I think, like two years ago from Reggie fils who used to be Nintendo of America's president. Um, yeah. He talked about the fact that uh, this would have been like mid-2010s. He tried to get Xbox and PlayStation together with Nintendo to work on an accessibility controller that would work on all three of the consoles. So you wouldn't have to have a different one per console. I so don't know what happened to it or why it fell through, but there was a time where the industry was maybe and... having conversations about we could just have one accessibility controller that everyone can use <laughs> and here i am dragging nintendo every time that comes out with a new game because it's not accessible but enough but, but again here's my thought it, nintendo of america nintendo of america constantly seems to be the ones doing this yep. kind of innovation because back yep. in the 80s they were they were the ones yep. who made the nes hands-free mm -hmm. controller it really seems nintendo of america is very up on it nintendo of japan maybe <laughs> not so much no no uh, uh... 
Yeah, I uh, yeah. would love to see a love child. Uh, I don't think with today's world and today how like the industry is set up, it will never happen. Even when we see now that they are crashing down on third party use controllers, it will I, never happen. But I, we are allowed I think, to dream. <laughs> I, think, I think if it ever happens, I think the way it will happen is a, a company that makes controllers for multiple consoles, like Hori or one of those third party controller yeah. manufacturers, making something with a switch where you can change it from PlayStation mode to Xbox mode to yeah. Nintendo mode, uh, something like that. But yeah, um, for, for me, my big thing for the, the access controller is I'd love to see a version of it released that just had more ports. Yeah. But if nothing else, um, I think the big thing is so long as when the PlayStation 6 eventually releases down the line, it supports the access controller on day one. Yeah. I think that's that that will be a really good sign because like that was one of the best things about the Xbox adaptive controller is the new Xbox generation came around and day one there was a accessibility controller that worked yeah. for it. If PlayStation keeps that up into their next generation... Nintendo's really the only one we need to get on that train yeah. and the industry will be in a really good place. And I think also if if PlayStation gives us the computer porting right now. Yeah. Because right now my Xbox is my main setup. Yeah. But if PlayStation does that, my PlayStation it, will be my main setup. It would be really nice if they made a program on PC that not only like recognized and allowed you to um remap the controller the way you do on PlayStation 5. But specifically, if you made a profile on PlayStation, plugged it into your PC that had that program, oh. and your your existing profile with the profile switching button still worked, that would be great. Or if they like the app, because you have the PlayStation mm. app, what if you could yeah. have like a profile setting in there? Because that is one thing that annoys me is that since I use all my setup on the floor, I always need to go down on the floor to turn it off because uh, you need yeah. to push the Xbox, uh, the PlayStation yes. button. If I could just make them go alive with my phone, mwah, then yeah. I didn't need to or, go down on the floor. Or again, I think that having the profile button be something in their remapping, that you can map an external button that's in one yeah. of those ports to be the profile button. Yeah. So that you can have the profile button somewhere else accessible yeah. would be really good. <laughs> yeah, because... And again, these, these are all really doable things, I think. Yeah, I also think it. And I think there's just like... I think... When you make a product like this, you have to be a bit like, shush, shush, we can't tell everybody. That is just yeah. part of branding and how things work. Yeah. Now they have let it go into the wild, <laughs> the yeah. gaming zoo. Now everybody can come and test it out. <laughs> and now you will have ideas that is just, it's impossible to get them before because you don't get this amount of inputs. Uh, yeah. So I hope they will just listen to the community. I feel as... Like my feel is that PlayStation want to listen to the community, but uh, we have to remember that these monsters of uh, companies that they are because they're so big, th yeah. these changes won't happen for years. Because uh, if an idea comes yeah. in, it takes time. Yeah, I I deeply hope they do take on board feedback yeah. because I think a lot of a lot of the things that people have criticisms of are things that could be actioned yeah. and wouldn't be that difficult to action. And I really hope that we see that sort of feedback make its way in. And it's been constructive criticism, uh, yeah. is mostly I've seen. Like, if we're being the game industry, people have been extremely mild on their... Of yeah. course, we always have those people who just shit on something, but that's the gaming <laughs> yeah. industry, sadly. Uh, uh, but compared to, like, how mean people are when they review games and stuff, or, like, talk about games, they have been really mild. So I hope that makes them to not be afraid to ask, to understand that the community just wants the best for everyone. They actually want to have them on board. Because that is what we all want in the end, right? It's to yeah. come to the conclusion we can all be happy about, but we need to listen to each other. And also maybe PlayStation can also come to us and say like, I love this idea, but the way this is set up, that is not realistic. Yeah. I will also love to hear that. <laughs> Uh, I think that's a good place for us to start wrapping up. Yeah. Uh, do you want to tell people where they can find you on the internet? Yeah. And all the things that you do. They find me under the name Arevia everywhere online. I think on TikTok, somebody stole my name. So I'm still Arevia <gasps> Gaming on TikTok. Oh. And it's a, it's a person from my country even. That stole mine. Because I get it up where in the country they have, have a profile. And I was just like, thanks. 
Thanks, but yeah, somebody saw my name there. So I'm Arevia Gaming <laughs> on TikTok, Arevia everywhere else. I stream every Sunday, show off how I game with my feet. So if you're curious about that, stop by my stream or YouTube on Sunday so you can watch me stream with my feet. It's really cool, actually. <laughs> Yay. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for watching. We'll have more accessibility-focused content here soon. Goodbye. Bye-bye.